Hey guys, Hardly Brief Dan here with another episode of the Unity Make an RPG series. Today we're going to continue where we uh, left off working on our inventory system. I'll go ahead and do a quick review and then we'll jump right into where, uh, where we want to be and work on. So, first things first, last time we worked on uh, using our item slot prefab and we created a method that basically is a for loop that runs through and creates a number of slots that we specify. So in our case I said I wanted to create 25 slots. And you can see in our <clears throat> game view here, we have 25 slots. And they're all labeled empty. You can see them in the inspector. And basically, it's just a toggle button with a couple images uh, layered on it. And so from there, we got the UI looking good. And we all did that through script. So through this class here, we went ahead and did that. We uh, created this method here. This comment wasn't there. Uh, go ahead and get rid of that. That was for testing earlier. But anyways, we went ahead and created this method. And we're going to use this method a little bit today. And we're going to go ahead and create a couple new ones. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing that we want to do today is go and we're going to go ahead and add a new library up here. So we're going to say using system. And we've used it before. We're going to do dot collections dot generic. And this is going to allow us to use the uh, list type. So we're going to create a new private variable, private list. It's going to be of type game object, and we're going to go go ahead and label this inventory slots. Now we're going to go ahead and create another private list while we're here, and we're, this is going to be of base item, and we're going to go ahead and call this player inventory. So what we need to do first is go ahead and get this inventory slots. Going to double click and hit Control C to copy. And in our create inventory slots and window method that we worked on last time, at the very beginning of that, we want to go ahead and control paste V, control paste that. And what we want to do is instantiate it. So we're going to say that's equal to a new list game object. Uh, and then what we want to do is every item slot that we create, so every time we run this for loop, every one we create, we want to go ahead and add it to this list. So after we, uh, we can say after we give it the group, we want to go ahead and say inventory slots dot add. So we're going to go ahead and add it. We're going to say item slot. And hit control S to save. So we're just going to go ahead and add these game objects to another list game objects. This allows us to use this list uh, later on. And you'll go ahead and see that in just a second. Now, the next thing that we need to do is using this base player class that we created a while ago that has this inventory, this private list inventory. Instead of making that static or something or, pu or in public and stuff, we can go ahead and just do, since we've gone ahead and created this public variable, uh, this public method before, we'll go ahead and find this game object in our scene and use this method to return an inventory. So go ahead and hit control to save, go into Unity, we're going to go ahead and create an empty game object. So in our hierarchy here, we're going to go create empty. We're going to label it player. We're going to go ahead and tag it player. And we're going to reset its position. Just so hit this little gear and reset. So now we have an empty game object in the center of the scene. Uh, what we want to do now is go add component, scripts, base, player. So now uh, this game object has the, the component base player. Go back into Visual Studio, and we'll go ahead and work on our new method. So below our method that we created last time, we're going to go ahead and create a private void. So it returns nothing method. And we're going to go ahead and say add items to slots, or add items from, we'll say add items from inventory. And what we want to do first is go ahead and find that base player that, that player game object. So we're going to find, or we're going to create a variable. Uh, it's going to be of type base player. And we're going to label this base player script. And we're going to go find the game object now and get the component. So we're going to say game object, capital G, dot find object with tag. And we're going to look for the tag player. Then we're going to say dot get component. And we're going to look for the base player component. Pretty simple. What we're doing is we're searching the scene for a game object that has a tag of player, and we're getting its component base player. 
So make sure you only have one in your scene. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is using our player inventory uh, variable that we created. We're going to say player inventory is going to be equal to our base player script dot return player inventory. And if you remember this little method here just returns our private instance of our inventory. And now we're going to work on creating a for loop. So we're going to say for int i is equal to zero. i is going to be less than our player inventory dot count. So basically it's i is less than the size of our inventory i plus plus. Do the brackets and this is what we're going to do with this. I'll go ahead and explain. We're running a for loop. The for loop's going to run for however big our inventory is. Inventory our actual inventory list is. So if we have 50 items in it, we're going to have 50 items or 50 things to go through. So now what we want to do is go if inventory slots of i so like inventory slot 0 uh, its name is equal to empty Then we want to go ahead and do something, uh, and I'm going to go ahead and just type the rest of the code out, and then we'll go. I'll go ahead and explain it. So we're, what we'll say is inventory slots of i dot name is now equal to um, player inventory of i dot item name. So what we're doing is we're running through our player inventory, then the number of things items in our inventory. We're going to relabel the slot name to the name of the item that's now pointed to that position. Uh, and then we're going to actually change this, but I want to go ahead and show you that this is how it works. So in our base player script, if you remember, we're actually creating 10 items with this for loop. We'll go ahead and jump into Unity, press play. Hopefully everything works. Uh, it didn't, and that's because I need to Oh, it didn't work. Let me check. Oh, I, I need to go ahead and call this method. So go ahead and highlight the add items inventory. Maybe you already did that. Place it below the cre after we create the window. Control to save. Press play. Now we're actually calling that code to do it. And you can see here in the hierarchy, uh, our empties have changed to item 85, 27. We now have items, right? So now we're pointing to a position in a list, uh, kind of. So now what we want to do. Uh, I just want to show you that to show you that this the code is working. Uh, I think it's easier to tell that it's working by look. Hey, the name shows the item name. Uh, that works. But there's a way. What we're gonna do. Uh, what I've done in the past in a previous project is instead of saying item name, uh, we're gonna actually just say i dot two string. So we're gonna keep it a number. I'll hit Control S to save. Jump into Unity, and I'll show you that. So you said this is zero, one, two, three, four, all the way to nine. So we have ten things here. And the reason why I want to do that is because now I can use this name uh, to point to the position in the list of the inventory that we want. Uh, and it's just a lot easier. Now, if all your items have unique names, then you can do it that way. It's it's really up to you. But if we randomly generate items, then using just pointing to that is pretty easy. So now that we do that, uh, we've added the item. Uh, this is where you're going to show, the, like, look at that item. So look at the item and add the or change we'll say add the proper icon to display uh, that's where I did it and we're gonna actually do that soon uh, but we're not gonna do it now we're gonna go ahead and work on something else uh, so this works that's perfect uh, now what we want to do is jump into unity and we're gonna create a new script so in our scripts folder here uh, under item I guess we'll do it in the inventory we'll go ahead and create a new script and we're going to call this selected item. Uh, we're going to go ahead and attach that to a prefab. So just drag and drop it to item slot. I'm going to open that up in Unity. Hit reload all. Zoom in for you. And there's a couple things we need to add here. We're going to add two. Actually, first we need to go ahead and add a library. So we'll say using Unity Engine dot UI allows us to use UI. We're going to say private text. Uh, this is going to be selected item text. We're going to make another private variable here. This private variable, actually we don't need that right now. Uh, we just need one. 
and set private select to text. Now we're going to go ahead and create a method here. It's going to be public and it's going to be void. It's going to return nothing. And we're going to say show selected item text. Uh, and what we'll do is we're going to say if this dot game object dot name or excuse me get component toggle is on so if it's if it's clicked right if it's has a little check on it uh, then we want to go ahead and do something with it well we want to say hey if the name if the name of this or if the this dot game object dot name is equal to empty They want to say selected text is equal to uh, this slot is empty. Right, so there's nothing here. And that just lets the player know, hey, this slot's empty. The next thing we want to do is create an else statement. So if else. And so basically it's saying, hey, if it doesn't equal empty, then what do we want to do? Well, we want to go ahead and say selected item text dot text is going to be equal to what? What do you want to have here? Well, if our base item, if we created in our base item a like a method here that returned a a, a string of information, maybe like a, all the numbers, all the stats, whatever, then we can go ahead and call that method. Well, our items don't do that right now. So we'll go ahead and just say item name plus description. And the way we do that is pretty cool way I think uh, of using the number that we just created in when we add the items so what we'll do is say selected item text dot text is gonna be equal to our player inventory which we need to get so what we'll do is go up to the top we'll create a private list of oh, not array list we need to go ahead and actually add the generic class here or the generic library so we'll say system dot collections dot generic and we're create a private list base item we're gonna go ahead and get the inventory again so we'll say player inventory like that controls the save I'm gonna jump into our inventory window script and I'm gonna go ahead and gra grab this player this base player stuff because we're gonna search for the same game object again so we'll go ahead and control C that to copy it and then paste it in our start method like that so now our player inventory has um, now we have our player inventory so we can access it. So we're going to go ahead and copy the player inventory. We're going to say our, a selected item text dot text is player inventory of what? Well, we need a number here. And the number is going to be the name of the item slot that we've selected. So the way you do this is you say system dot uh, int32 dot parse. Okay, and now what are we going to parse? Well, we're going to parse uh, this dot game object dot name. And I'll explain this in just a second. So dot, so now that we have this, now we have accessing an item. We want to go ahead and get its name. Let me say plus. I'm going to go ahead and copy all that again. Plus, we'll do a space, another plus sign, all that again. So I just pasted it. Uh, description. So I'll go ahead and explain this code. Uh, hopefully, you guys will be able to understand it after I do. Uh, basically, we have this method. It's public. It doesn't return anything. It's called show selected item text. And when this method is ran, when it's called, it's going to say, "Hey, is this game object is it turned on? Is the toggle selected? If it is, then it's going to check its name." the name is empty then we know there's nothing there or the slot is empty otherwise if the name is not empty if it's one zero five thirty whatever then this is what we want to do so in our click in our case we have a number of a name so our names are zero through however many items we have in our inventory so but that's still stored as a string so we need to go ahead and convert it back to an integer so what we do is say this player inventory the system.int32.parse, we're actually converting this string that is a name to a, an integer. So we're looking at the string 1 and we're converting it to the number 1. Uh, and then we're saying, so basically, that's basically saying player inventory uh, of 1. 
So we're pointing to the game object or the base item that's in position one and we're getting its name and then description. Uh, and I'll go ahead and show you all this once we get it running at the mic. Sorry about that. I'll hit control S to save. We'll go into Unity and hopefully we don't have any errors. It doesn't look like we do. Uh, so in order for this all to run first, we need to go ahead and create a prefab. Uh, and this pre or not prefab, we need to go ahead and create a new UI component. And I'm going to go ahead and add it to our inventory window. So we're going to create UI. Uh, it's going to be text, and we're going to call it uh, selected item text. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and drag it down below our scene or below our window. Make it kind of big. We're going to change the color to white. Just in the inspector here, just color white. Going to go ahead and delete the text in there. Control to save. Uh, and now I'm going to go ahead and move it to our inventory window. So now it's part of this. So if we move the window here, it moves everything. Uh, and what we need to do now is in our script that we just wrote, we need to go ahead and find this selected item text. And we'll do that in our start method. So we'll say selected item text is equal to game object with a capital G dot find. And we're going to go ahead and find the game object selected item text. I'm going to make sure I spelled it correctly, so I'm going to just copy it from the Unity, paste it in there, and we'll say dot get component. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get the text component. Pretty simple. So basically, when our button, our prefab, our item prefab slot is instantiated, it's going to run this script. It's going to say, hey, find this, find our inventory, get the inventory. And then when we click on one of our buttons, it's going to run this method. We still need to set that up so that when our button, when you click it, it runs it. And we'll do that now. So control S to save, go into Unity. Click our prefab here in the project folder. And you see this on value change boolean. I'm going to go ahead. Shouldn't be anything there. I was testing some, some stuff out earlier. I'm going to go ahead and remove this. Uh, anyways, on the value change boolean, we're going to go ahead and click the plus symbol. We're going to drag and drop the item slot itself. So the prefab, just clicked in the project folder and dragged it over. Go to no function. We want to go to select item. And we want to find the show selected item text. Now, if this works, which it should, you should see item information down here. Now I'm going to go ahead and press play. Click that one. And you see item 14. Item 14 is an awesome item. Uh, and this does everything. So if it's empty, the slot is empty, the slot is empty. So we're actually pointing to some valuable information. And just to show you the kind of things we can do, I'll go ahead and do, go back into Unity here, or into Visual Studio, and we'll change this. We don't, let's not look at the item description anymore. Let's go ahead and look at the uh, item stats of, let's say there's multiple stats. So we'll get the first stat dot name. So basically what we're doing here is we're looking uh, at the the first stat in our item stats list, and we're getting its name. Controls to save, go into Unity, and press play again. Creating a whole bunch of random items, and we can see that it stamina all of them. Pretty cool. Uh, so basically, now uh, hopefully that kind of shows you guys how we're looking at items, uh, how the inventory is kind of going to work. Basically, we have the shell of it, and all we're going to do now is add pictures to it. And then it's up to you to customize it, right? It's up to you to customize what you want that information to show. You can add little pop-up windows and stuff like that. It's all up to you. Uh, but basically, in the next video, we'll go ahead and add some pictures to make the items look more official. Uh, and then we'll probably move on from there. But anyways, hope you guys liked the video. Hope you stuck around to the end. Hope you learned something. Please pass on the channel to your friends. I'm really looking forward to get to... 4,000 subscribers, so all the help you guys can do is awesome. Again, thanks for the support, and I'll talk to you guys next time.